everybody welcome back to my channel today I just wanted to get ready um, my husband took my kids to my daughter's dance and so I have some time I made dinner so I'm just gonna get ready I have some tutoring tonight so just want to freshen up this face um, I have nothing on my face except um, sunscreen that I put on earlier today so just a bare face here um, and yeah let's get ready and I'll talk to you about some of the products that I'm using if you're not already subscribed I would love to have you here um, following me along on my makeup no buy and also um, just following along with my reviews and my empties and things like that so Hopefully you will subscribe and please comment down below if you have any questions or any suggestions. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> so like I said, I have nothing on my face. My hair is, um, I braided it and it always looks so weird. I, I see kids like braid their hair and they look beautiful, but my, my naturally wavy hair doesn't work very well in curls. So anyway, um, the first product I'm going to use is this Neutrogena Hydra Boost Foundation. I like this foundation for a couple reasons. Number one, it has hyaluronic acid and my skin and almost everyone I knows, everyone I know, almost everyone I knows skin. What? Almost everybody I know enjoys hyaluronic acid. There it is. So um, I just, I, it plumps the skin. It's supposed to be a natural um, humectant. So it brings moisture to your skin. And I just really liked this product. The color I have is natural beige. I think um, on my like my winter skin tone, which my face is pretty much the same color all year. It's just like my neck. Um, on my winter skin, I think I use the color nude, um, but I got a little bit darker. It's still too light, but just bear with me. Um, but I really like this. The negative is um, that it doesn't have SPF, but that's not really a negative for me because um, it reminds me that you need your separate SPF regardless, even if your product has SPF in it. So just kind of keep that in mind. So this one has the wand applicator. I really like wand applicators because I like rubbing it on my skin like this. Um, some people say that it's um, not sanitary. And I get that because I'm putting it on my face and then I'm putting it back in the bottle. But I guess what I want to say is these are my germs. So I'm fine with it. Uh, but here's the negative besides the SPF if you're a person that cares about that. Um, did you see how many times I've had to dip into this bottle? So <clears throat> the Doe Fit applicator applies some product, but not a lot. So just kind of keep that in mind. You just have to keep dipping. And I'm just going to use this fake Artiste brush. I got this in a BoxyCharm, like my first, oh, that was my bronzer. But anyway, my first, first I think, BoxyCharm. And I have absolutely loved it. I'm sure the real Artiste brushes are beautiful but I'm never gonna buy them <laughs> so I like this remind me to buy a mirror that goes right in front of my camera because I have a mirror behind it but it, the camera's blocking it and I have a mirror to my left that I'm always looking at but that's distracting so I don't know someone comment and remind me to do this so I think you can get this this has no brand or I would link it and tell you where to get it. But I've seen um, brushes like this at Walmart, at Target. Um, so I think if you just get, it's just very densely packed. And I like the shape of this. Like it's not as big. I think the Artiste brush for foundation is a very big one. This is a nice one that you could use for contour. If you're that kind of person, um, if you're a person who contours. <laughs> anyway but um I just like this one you put your finger right on here it's very ergonomic ergonomic I'll write the word that I'm trying to say right here so I'm rubbing this more than it needs to it's already it's already um blended out but I just like this it, I know it's too light so just bear with me but I think that it gives a nice coverage um it's only a light to medium coverage but it certainly makes me feel like more blended and more put together um and just evens out my skin tone it's not full full coverage um I also like that it's not um totally matte but it's also not dewy so I think it's a good one for just everyday use um and it also wears very well on the skin so I'm debating whether I want to powder my face I don't think I'm going to we're gonna live on the edge okay the bronzer that I'm going to use is this very small Marc Jacobs bronzer I got this in a set that had um 
a mascara, Marc Jacobs mascara, and then this. This is the Tantastic Omega Bronzer. I've always wanted this. People rave about it so much, and I really wanted it, but I didn't want to pay the $40 or $45 for it. Um, and then they came out with this. This and a... Um, and a mascara for 20 or $25. I highly recommend trying this because if you like it, then it's worth it to buy the larger pan because it's definitely a price per value difference. But um, A, I've never gone through a bronzer in my life, so I'm not gonna go through this. And B, um, it allowed me to try it for a much less, much, much cheaper price. I know you're not supposed to say cheap because that means it's not of good quality, but that's what I want to say. I'm gonna put this on with my Real Techniques powder brush. I really like this one. And let's just put that on. So I do feel like I need to put quite a bit of this one on. And again, that's why I'm glad I have the size that I do because I'm not sure if I love it enough, but I do like it. This is a bronzer that I feel like the brush makes a difference. So I used it with my e.l.f. Cosmetics um, complexion brush, this brush that I use a lot, and I didn't feel like it picked up the product too much. And even this one seems a little bit fluffy. So I'm gonna switch to this Real Techniques Instapop brush. I really like them. Um, it's the Instapop face brush. And I it has this angle to it you can put it right in. So I'm gonna use this bronzer with this one and I think you're gonna see a little bit more of a difference. If any of you have trouble with the butter bronzer showing up on your skin, the original bronze color was a little bit too light for me. And the minute I got this brush, it showed up on my skin. So I said this in a, few, a recent video, but the tools that you use can sometimes really impact the color payoff. I noticed that most specifically with eyeshadows, so a synthetic brush may work better than a natural hairbrush, and I think you just try it um, and see which one works better. But I do think I can see this more with this brush versus the one that I had before. On another note completely, I'm debating growing my bangs out. So I've had bangs for a little over a year. I got them when I found out I had to get my gallbladder out, which that's just what I do. Find out you gotta get an organ removed, so cut bangs. And I've loved them, but now my hair is really long and I was starting to feel that they were not fitting on top of the fact that I haven't gotten them trimmed in a while. So way down below, bangs or no bangs? Maybe I'll insert a picture right now of me with bangs and you can tell me what you think. All right, for the rest of my face products, I'm gonna use this very reflective <clears throat> and quite old um, Becca and Jaclyn Hill palette. I'm gonna go into the middle blush, which is in the color Amaretto, and then I'm gonna use the um, Champagne Pop, and I'm just using a Morphe brush to put this on with. Oh, I forgot concealer. I gotta do that. Well, this is gonna be very odd. I'm gonna use my Christopher Buckle br brush for the highlight. Always tap off the powder. Or else the powder will be on you. I'm a little on my nose. Okay. So I guess I should do some concealer. So I'm trying to use some products that I haven't used in a while, so and make as much noise as possible. So this is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer. I feel like I don't know how I feel about this. So I feel like I don't know. I know that I don't know that I, I need, I think I need to take a nap. I know that I don't know how I feel about this. So I'm gonna use it and see if I can form an opinion. I'm always on the quest for a new concealer. So if any of you have a favorite recommendation that would be great I also struggle with the color like this one looks super bright just using my elf complexion brush uh, sponge this one looks super bright and if you get too bright of a concealer it doesn't actually conceal it just kind of brightens your under eye and I need to conceal it'd be great if it concealed and brightened
Well, number one, it is very interesting to put on concealer when the rest of my face is already done. I'm finding it interesting. I'm gonna use my Boot 7 Lift and Illuminate Powder in light to set that. But if you can tell, it didn't cover that darkness. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but uh, I'm definitely brightened, but I, I'm not quite sure what I think about the coverage. So let me powder it and see. I wonder if with this concealer I should be using my, ooh, let's do it. So I have the, the, the boots number seven is um, usually called a dupe for the um, Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless filter. And I have this in shade number two. Um, and so I don't use this on my under eye because I think it's too dark, but let me try to apply it. Let me just finish patting this one out. Let me try to apply it on this too light concealer and see if together it's a match made in heaven. So I'll let you know what I think in editing. What do you think? I wonder. All right, so let's get on to brows and then eyeshadow. So brows, I'm gonna use the Cabral um, number four um, brow pomade. I used this like so, I was so dedicated to this for a full year and then at the beginning of me starting my channel, I decided to branch out and I've been using some pencils, but I'm gonna go back to this one today. So I'm gonna put this on and then I will be right back. And P.S. I just use the brush that's right with it. I just clean it often so that it stays in its nice form. Um, I will say, and then I'm gonna put my brows on, I will say that I actually like the bigger pot better. And I don't know why, but I feel like it's a little bit different. Um, maybe because with this one, I don't know how well you're gonna be seeing this, but I have to dip in pretty far before I see the product. And it's um, it's hard to see how much I'm picking up. With the bigger one, I was able to see it. So this may be an example of that I'd rather have the big one, um, even though it costs more, but you do, certainly get the product. Um, and it lasted up, it lasted for me for over a year. Now, now I'll be back. So I'm filming today with the back camera on my iPhone. And so I just, I don't know if this is picking up on camera, but I have my hair sticking straight up, but I can't see it while I'm filming. So if I'm out of frame or look crazy, it's all because I'm filming like this and uh, we'll see whether it's worth it. Yep, I think that's my final verdict. I like the bigger one of this. So I gotta find someone to trade. Do a little tradesy. I'm just gonna use my spoolie from my It Cosmetics pencil here. Okay, so far in the under eye, I am not noticing a difference, but what I am noticing is I don't love this concealer. Let me get a little bit closer. So I just think this isn't fully covering my dark circles. That's what I think. I mean, I want them to not exist. We'll see. All right, a little Milani primer on the eyelids. Always love this. I meant to say, this is sometimes considered a dupe for the Smashbox primer, which I actually have. I like this one better. I think the Smashbox one is a little drier, and so I find that it skips a little bit on my lid, so I prefer this one. And it's significantly less money. This lasts me for well over a year, so don't put this in your panning project. All right, so I really should put some product in my hair. <laughs> anyway, so today I'm using the Tribe Palette by Juvia's Place. This is the one that people voted on as the next palette that I should be using. I did a really bright green look using the lime green, this bright green, and then this color, which is such an interesting shade. So it looks, you know, champagne in here or icy, but it has such a green shift. So let's see if you can fully see it on my hand. Do you see that? It's like a gold green shift. And so a lot of people, like even when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, I can make a super neutral look with this and this. This is gonna turn out green. It reminds me very much of the Mama Odie shade in the ColourPop, um, 
oh god it, I think it's Midnight Masquerade palette very very similar in color but um today I'm just going to focus on the oranges and a little bit of this copper shade but I do I've been really enjoying this so let's get started so I'm going to use my um, Morphe E22. I just watched Emily Noel talk about Profusion brushes, and I'm definitely putting that on my wish list. I, the way she talks about those brushes reminds me of what I like about my brushes. So um, I'll actually link her video where she talks about that so you can check it out. But I'm going to start with uh, the color Ashanti right here, and I apologize in advance if I mess up any of these names. I do expect that I will. So I'm just going to use this as a transition crease. Oh, what was I going for? An orange look. Okay, that's fine. So. <laughs> okay, we're going to make it. So I'm just going to blend this out. If you've never tried Juvia's Place, they're available on their website, but also on um, the Ulta website and Ulta stores, at least my Ulta store, and I really, really, really like the formula. I love how bright the colors are. The pans are usually enormous, so if you're a person that really cares about your price per ounce and and you use, um, you use shadow, like you stick to a couple shadows and you use them all the way up, you'll really appreciate that. I just like them overall. I wanna say something about panning real quick. I know I'm jumping all over the place, sorry. I think I decided that I hate what it looks like when people just try to hit pan and you can tell that's their only purpose because they only go into one spot and they're like digging in every single time. And a part of me is like, if you're doing it just to hit pan, then are you really hitting pan or are you digging your brush into your, into your powder? Like, I don't know, it's, it's inauthentic panning. I guess that's what I wanna say. Like I like, when somebody hits pan, it shows me that they love the shadow so much that they've hit pan and that inspires me to either get it or to really think about it. Like when I see YouTubers hit pan on shadows, I'm like, whoa, because their collections are even larger than mine. So if they're hitting pan on something, that means something. I remember Jaclyn Hill hitting pan on all these Makeup Geek shadows. And I was like, oh, Makeup Geek must be a brand that I need to get involved in because she has all these shadows and she's hitting pan on those. I saw Jessica Braun hitting pan on a Charlotte Tilbury um, eyeshadow quad, the Pillow Talk one. And I was like, wow, that must be a good shadow. But when people are like forcing themselves to hit pan, it's not authentic anymore. Do you agree? Let me know. Let me know what you think. Could I try to get my brush all around the pan? So, all right, so this is a color Ashanti. It has, are you seeing the little bit of, like there's a little bit of a yellow shift in this brown. Although here, I wasn't picking up on that in the pan, but certainly on the eye, it's almost mustardy. Do you see it? Yeah, I like it. To bring up Jacqueline Hill again, who I'm apparently talking about to today quite a bit, um, she calls this color uh, like baby poop, <laughs> which as a mother of three, I agree. All right, so let's get into the oranges now, even though I just made that so mustardy okay so I don't know if this is gonna look good so just bear with me but I'm gonna go into the matte orange which the colors are so this packaging is so bright um Oromo O-R-O-M-O -O. uh no Oromo I'm gonna use that same brush I did wipe it off and let's see I do love orange I love orange shirts I love orange blush I love probably not orange lipstick though even orangey red lipstick, I don't love that much, but I do love orange. So mix with that brown, look at what it's doing. It's making it even more yellow based. Hmm. Well, isn't this a fun discovery? Okay, I could work that up to make it more orange, but I actually, I'm liking this color quite a bit. All right, now I'm gonna go into the color Curla. I can't be pronouncing these correctly. So this metallic orange, oop, I dipped into the, to the teal, but this metallic orangey red color, look at that. That is some pigmentation. That's 
what I love about these shadows. Do you see how far I can go? I still have the color. I love it. Okay, so let's pat. I have an, another Instapop brush. I really like this whole line. <clears throat> I'm putting it on the Instapop brush and then let's work that in the outer corner. Now, Juvia's Place um, palettes do not, I don't think I have one that has a mirror and I have quite a few. So if that's something that really bugs you, the price is so unbeatable though. So I would hope it's not something that's gonna stop you from purchasing from this brand. And it is a black owned business and it's catered. It's one of the few brands that is truly catered to people with deeper skin tones. Their skin range is unbelievable, but they don't leave out light pale skin people like me. So um, I really, I just like, I like what that brand is doing, but they do create very pigmented products that will show up beautifully on deeper skin tones. So I'm leaving that inner corner because I'm hoping to get the bronze in there. Let me just blend this a little bit. I'm digging it. And then, and that was by the way with a brush. Usually I put metallics on with my finger. Maybe I'll tap a little bit, but let me try the metallic. So the metallic um, bronzy color, which is called Changa, is much, again, much more yellow based in the highlight, very gold. But it still has some orange reflect. I think it's so pretty. So let me put some of that with my finger on that inner part of my lid. Ooh, I will say sometimes it's very hard to blend shadows that have this duochrome because when I'm putting it on this side looks like I don't have enough product on because the light is hitting me really well over here so I just keep piling it onto there and now I've made it too bright on that side <laughs> so let's just even that out Okay, great. And then I'm going to dip in, actually with the little bit of color still on my finger, I'm gonna dip back into that metallic orange and I'm just going to use that to blend out right in the center of the two shades meeting. And then I'm gonna wipe my finger off and go in one more time to the metallic orange just by itself and build a little bit more of that on the end. And I'm just very lightly patting. I got my orange look for sure. So blending back with um, no shape, no um, excess pigment on this, just kind of a plain brush. And then just blending all of that together. All right, let's work on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna do some of the similar things. I'm definitely gonna dip back into Ashanti, which was that first shade. And then just run that on the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna take, have I told you about this brush? This is from Primark. I think it costs like a dollar. Um, it's double-ended and it just has a thinner and then a fatter flat brush. I really like it. So I'm gonna use the thinner part and I'm gonna go into, I keep wondering, Curla. Tell me how to pronounce these if you know, please. And I'm gonna put that just in the bottom middle. And then I'm gonna take that color Changa and I'm going to put that all around the inner rim. I usually close my eyes when I do that. But I can't see what I'm doing. Have I told you I'm blind? I don't know if I'm legally blind, but I have like negative seven and a half in that eye and negative six and a half in that eye and a horrible astigmatism. So. I usually wear glasses or contacts, and if I didn't, I would not survive, literally. All right, so this is the eye look as it looks right now. I'm going to, going to put some liner on. 
we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm probably going to use my all-time favorite eyeliner. If you haven't used the Mally eyeliners, I think they're phenomenal. She has some different um, types, like one of them is a retractable like this. I prefer her pencil ones that you have to sharpen. I've had this for a long time. This is a color Lucky Penny and it is metallic. So sometimes metallic liners don't look that great because um, when you're looking in light, it can look like it's skipping because it's reflecting color. So just kind of keep that in mind. But I love this in the lower inner rim, which is where I want to put it. Um, I just love, I love the formula. It's very soft and once it sets, it really doesn't move. So if you can get your hands on these, oftentimes on QVC, she'll have like a set of six or 10 for the holidays. Um, and if you can get your hand on these, they're great. They're the um, Evercolor. Evercolor Starlight Waterproof Liner. So I just put that in the bottom rim and I think I'm gonna do the top as well, just a little bit. All right, so for eyes, I'm gonna keep using my Believe mascara. I'm getting close to when I will need to declutter it. It's starting to get a little bit clumpy, but it's still working. I do gotta say I love this mascara. This will be a tough one to throw out after three months because I just love what it does to my lashes. And I won't be able to repurchase it because I have many more mascaras. All right, and then Thrive on the lower lashes, as usual, another one that I will really, really miss. And I love this mascara because it has the tubing effect so it doesn't smudge at the bottom, which is phenomenal. So, what do we do with our lips? I don't know. I'm feeling just a gloss, but what do we think? Okay, I'm gonna use this Milani liner in the color Most Natural, and then the Fenty Beauty um, lip gloss in the color Cherry. Nope, Cheeky. So this is what that liner looks like. And then a little bit of my favorite formula. Love this stuff. Do you like my hand? <laughs> All right, and that created a pretty nude look. I kind of like it. Okay, so here is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed getting ready with me. I hope you did get ready with me um, and that you enjoyed the little bit of reviews that I was giving as I went. I usually am just chatting about random stuff, but I decided today to talk about the actual formulas that I was using. So um, again, if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you would. If you have any suggestions for uh, video ideas, I would love to hear them. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye-bye.